again a travel poem. I was walking in the mountains and I saw this woman uh, who was, uh, uh, after about seven, eight days, I trekked in the mountains. And I see a very noisy river. You know, the brooks are very, not like these, very expensive rivers. We have like very noisy, you know, gushing and froth and a lot of noise. You can't even talk. So they come from the imaginable, unimaginable heights. And I was talking to this lady, a, a young girl sitting there, and uh, she, uh, she said, take me to Kathmandu. I said, why? She said, my husband is drunk and he's kind of very crazy. He's beating her up all the time. And this, uh, but then poets have, mm, poets can do that because <laughs> you might meet so many people, they can't be carrying everybody to Kathmandu. Uh, but, but there's a lot of romance. And also we have the Sanskrit uh, theory of rasas. You know, Sanskrit great classical poets, they, they, they conceive this idea of rasas. Ras means juice. So each poem has a predominant emotion. So when you're traveling, when you're writing, it has, of course, a metaphor of travels, but then you have a predominant emotion, like, let's say, uh, horror, or empathy, or, 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 being, or bravery, or love, or grotesque, or obscenity, you know. Each poem has, and it should come out when you, it, you, each poem should have a predominant motion or emotion. And that, that's the theory of rasa. So which rasa? This poem has love rasa. You know, it, so the whole thing should come in your mind. So if you, if you read classical, like Kalidasa and the classical Sanskrit the epic writers, they, they, they propounded this idea of theory of rasas. At this poem, you will see that it has, I, I try to use their images of Sanskrit poets. You know, the Kama Sutra. The, the Kama Sutra was written by a holy man, a saint, who would go to these places and, and watch. So, but this poem will use that, the, those exorbitant uh, uh, images of Sanskrit poets. It's called River. Between your marble shoulders and my hairy chest, the river roaring, tears, tears, tears. Between your mellowing mouth and my center tongue, a night of flames and flesh. Flesh, flesh. Between your hefty thighs and my throbbing hands, clouds drunk from the forests of rhododendrons, rhododendrons, rhododendrons. Between your almond eyes and my warm mouth, rain dropping like pearls on the plump leaves of the jungle, jungle, jungle. Between your shimmering skin and my dark hair, grass greener than the greenest parakeet, growing yellowish from incessant rain, rain, rain. Between your nights by the important pillow of your husband and my crazed headpiece, a poem of spring that shall fill our deep wounds, sprouting flowers, flowers, flowers. Between your tulips and my fragrant pen, a brain fever bird's craze cry, mad, mad, mad. Between the sparkle of your teeth and my sleep, a rain coming like a roar of a starving stream in the starless summer gloom of the night, night, night. Between your melon breasts and thrust of my soft lips, the rage of the river battering its head against the magic mountains, mountains, mountains. Between new decisions, between new decisions and my flickering lamps, the river mad. You, you poet, you bastard, go away. Thank you.